So these are the two different types of barrel clasp that I use. Um, I prefer this one because it um, only it doesn't require um, as much work. Um, all you're basically going to do is you're going to hide your knot, hide your knots inside. Um, that's all you're doing is just making a knot. With this uh, particular type of barrel clasp, you actually need an additional uh, product, which is your crimping tubes. It looks something like this, and they come in different colors as well. Um, so you just match it up to whatever you're using. So with the crimping tube, you would have to thread your, your line or your cotton thread, whatever you're using, through this little loop here. And then you'll use your crimping tube um, with some pliers, crimp, specially made crimping pliers, and you'll push down on it, and then that's how you secure it. Okay, so let me demonstrate. Okay, so first I'm gonna demonstrate how you use this particular barrel class, the one that has the flush ends with no loops. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna unscrew it. Now as a personal preference, you see there's two ends. I like to um, thread on the side that has the larger opening first and then I do this side second, okay? And I'll show you why. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create knots on top of knots because that's how we're going to secure our fishing line onto this barrel clasp. So as you can see, there's a tiny little hole. So I already know that with my size fishing line, which is um, the one that holds about 15 pounds. The thickness is, what is the thickness? 0.15 uh, in diameter. So I know that with this particular barrel class, um, I only need about three knots for this to be secured, okay? You have to remember this fishing line is pretty thick. So it's gonna make my knot. That's my first knot. I'm gonna make two more knots right on top. Now I can actually do about four knots. So if I'm putting it, when I'm starting off, see this to insert here is quite larger than my other hole. So if you can see that. The outer hole is larger than this one. It's hard to tell. Okay, so with this one, I know I can only fit three knots. With this one, I can probably do about four, and I'll go and I'll do four just to make it more secure. And it's just because I can get it through. I mean, I can still because you have to remember you want to stop it from coming from the from the other side. To get in here, yes, I can put in more knots. Okay, but the thing is, you want to prevent it from coming back through the other side. Okay, so that's three. And make sure you pull it tight. Now, if you want, you can do the extra step of applying some glue at this point now and let it dry, some super glue or some type of jewelry glue, um, like jewelry cement glue, that's clear. So you can do that step here prior to you putting on your barrel clasp, or you can put your barrel clasp on first and then put the glue inside. And that's just for extra uh, security. So now that I have my knot, I am gonna put my thread, my line, through the opening. So when you're first starting out, you wanna put your line through the opening. Like I said, I prefer to work with the larger opening first when I'm first starting out. So I'm just gonna pull that through and then my knot is gonna sit right inside. So I pulled it through. 
okay and then i'm just going to cut the excess off so i'm going to make sure i have I'm going to pull it until i can't pull any more i'm not going to force it okay but just so you know the more you force something and you pull it you know you are going to pull it you're going to damage your your jewelry okay because the remember these are handmade gonna cut that off now that's finished okay so now I'm just going to use some random beads that I have here now these aren't I'm just trying to make sure you guys can see <laughs> so these aren't beads that I actually use these are beads that are lower quality when I receive them they already look like they were fading or they just wasn't in a condition that I would sell it to anyone so I save these because when I'm Preparing waist beads, I usually string up to about 50 inches and I use these beads instead of the barrel clasp. I tie a knot around one of these beads and that's how I secure my ends until I receive an order and then I know how long I need to make my waist bead and then I will go back and add the barrel clasp. Okay, so for purposes of this video, we're just going to pretend we're making a project here. I'm just going to put some beads on just randomly. As you notice with the fishing line, you don't even need a needle because this is so strong. You can, go, you can just pick it up. So... That's another reason why I like using this one as well too. Especially when you're you have like your really small 11 0 beads, and sometimes it's hard to get that needle and the thread through. But with the fishing line, it always goes through every time. Okay. Okay, so I think I have enough beads just to demonstrate to you guys how to secure the other end. Move these to the side. Okay, so after you have created your waist bead or maybe you're, maybe you're making a bracelet, I don't know, whatever you're making, you're going to push all of your beads down and make sure everything is tight, 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 tight. Okay. Now, it's okay if, you know, if you have like a little loose. The thing is, you don't want it too loose. You don't want it sliding like this, you know, when, when you have your finished project. You know, if you have like a little, a little bit, it's fine. Well, I can, you know, if you have like a little bit, that's, that's fine. Because it's not really going to be that noticeable, okay? So, you want to make sure you have this tight. Now, this time, before I start making my knots, I want to actually put my other end of the barrel clasp on. Now, see, this side, I do last. This is my insertion side. So, this is the side that has the treading, the little screws. And that actually goes inside the opposite end of this barrel clasp. So, we're actually going to flip this around. And we're going to put our flush in close to our beads like that okay there we go so now we know when we get ready to connect we can easily screw it together now the reason why I like the reason why I like to do this side last is because this is so small my knot doesn't need to go all the way through this barrel class and it probably won't um, because it's so narrow up in here so i just want to make sure i have enough knots to fit right inside of this little piece right here okay so i'm going to make sure we push everything down and i'm going to make my three knots like i said i know i can only get three knots to fit in there 
because of the thickness of my line. So I'm gonna make this as tight as possible. I'm gonna hold my work, pulling my fishing line, not too hard. Because if you're heavy handed like me, you can tear anything apart. <laughs> Alrighty. So I'm gonna make my knot. Sometimes it's kind of tricky. I'm still getting used to it. So I'm gonna move before it collapses. I wanna make sure I move my knot as close See, I can, even though this knot isn't closed, I can hold this and push everything and still push everything down, but I'm holding this, so I haven't really closed my knot. So I'm holding that. So now I'm gonna push my knot down. I'm gonna get it so you guys can see. I'm trying to do it on camera. So I'm gonna push my knot. See, I got my knot right on top of the opening there so now i'm just gonna close it again you, the thing is it's not good it's hard to get it super super tight you just don't want so much space okay so i'm gonna get that knot close as i can there we go so that's as close as i can get it there okay and then i'm gonna make Another knot. Or actually, I'm. I think I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll do four. Well, we'll see. Let's do three. Cause I wanna make sure I have a tight seal. So that goes in, so that's two. And it's a little loose, so let me make another knot. Cause I wanna get it to where it's tight, to where it doesn't move so freely. So this is our third knot. And we're doing this real time. Cause also depending on how your knots lay, you may or may not need to make an additional knot. Okay, so that's three knots. So that goes on the knot and off, on and off. And that's three. Now I see that I have a little extra space right there. So I'm gonna do one more knot and that's that. Now I could have just stopped right there but since I had the space, cause I wanna fill that hole. There we go. Okay. And that goes in. Okay. So at this point, I would take some of your glue, some super glue, um, or your jewelry cement glue, put it on there and then immediately push your knot through, okay? So that way it's gonna dry in place. On this side of your barrel clasp, nothing goes inside of here, okay? Because this is the side that goes inside of your outer opening, okay? So while that's drying, it doesn't take, especially if you're using super glue, like it doesn't take long to dry. I'm just gonna cut that, okay? So now this is our finished work. So as you can see, Yes, my, it's not really, like it doesn't feel tight. Like it doesn't feel tight and stiff. You can't see my fishing line, although it wiggles a little bit. That's as much as you'll see, but it's gonna be on your body. Like I said, it's not really that noticeable. Everything for the most part is together. Okay. Have to remember where, where we are humans. Is only remember, as tight, is it's only so much tightness we can do. That you have a crimping <laughs> and we're doing everything by hand. Okay. So now, so I already have two here. We're gonna, now, what I like about this is that everything is the same. <laughs> so this would be a cute Both sides are the same. 
<laughs> you're gonna do everything the same way. So, so I can pick up either one. It doesn't matter which one I wanna start with, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my fishing line. I'm gonna take, so when you're first starting out, you're gonna take your crimping tube, you're gonna thread it on. So, because now we're, we're getting fresh before we put any beads on. So we're gonna take our crimping tube because your project is gonna go this way, okay? Where your fishing line is. But what we're doing, we're making our first securing end, okay? So you wanna put, you always wanna make sure your crimping tube goes on first and then either end of your barrel clasp, okay? So I have my crimping tube on there. I'm just gonna put the fishing line through the loop then you're going to bring your fishing line back through your crimping tube. Okay. And I'm going to pull it all the way close to my loop. Okay. Now, if you're using a fishing line, I do not recommend um, compressing on your crimping tube so close to your, um, hold on, I came apart. So close to your um, loop because it's gonna create so much tightness that you can actually cut the fishing line because this crimping tube is metal. It's a type of metal, I'm not sure what type, but when you push down, you can actually cut through your fishing line. So you wanna give yourself a little slack. So when you push down, you're not pulling, because because every, everything is gonna become tight, tightened when I use my pliers, okay? So I wanna give a little space, okay? So now that I've done that, and it doesn't matter how much line you have sticking out. Um, after you secure this, you can either cut it off. What I normally do is I just put my beads through it so I don't have to worry about cutting it. I just feel like it's extra security, okay? So now I have my placement where I know where I want my crimping tube to sit. So now I'm gonna take, You want to take some crimping pliers. These are made for the crimping tube. Okay, and you can get these at any craft store. Even Walmart sells these. Okay. So there's different set of teeth. There's different set. I don't know if you can see. There's different set of teeth. As you can see there. Yeah, you can see it better on this side. So when you use this, you want to put the crimping tube on the very tip, the first one, the first section. Your initial squeeze is going to go on the first one. Okay, so we're going to do that next. Again, not too close, but not too loose. Okay, and just go straight down, straight down. That's it, and let go. Okay, because with these, if you're heavy-handed like me, you can also crack <laughs> your crimping tubes as well. <laughs> All right, so we made our first, and see, it's already secure. Like, it's not coming out, okay? But what you want to do is you want to fold it over. See how we have that much space? So you can actually fold that over. Okay. So what we're going to do next is keeping it on the same, keeping it still flat how it was. So if I wasn't, if I wasn't showing you guys, if I was just doing this on my own, I would push down, like I said, at the very tip first. Then I will lift up, 
Then I would immediately go to my second set of teeth. So you see that little knot right there? I want that to go in the middle of my crimping tube to create a, to create a demarcation within my, to create like a, like a little dent within my crimping tube. So I'm gonna do that. Again, if you're doing this, you know, just straightforward, you'll do one and then second set of teeth. Just go straight down. Just give it a little, there we go. And be careful with this because, see, sometimes you can crack it, but it's fine because we're going to fold this over. Okay, sometimes you can cut a little bit. So, like I said, I'm pretty heavy-handed. <laughs> so, anyway, but it's still, it's not going anywhere. Okay. Then, while it's very flat and it's up and down, now I want to do my third squeeze and I'm just going to fold it over, fold this over in half, okay? See if I can show you on camera. And I'm going to use the first part of my teeth, okay? So you don't have to go as, as hard as I did. I'm still trying to get used to my own strength um, when you use that second set of teeth because you don't want to push it down so much. You just want to give it a little, you know, or whatever. So that's just something I'm working on. So then you're going to use your, not as, like I said, you want to squish it. Let's see if we can see it this way. You're going to take it on the very tip, get it in there, and just, hang on. See, it's already folding over. That little bit that I did, oh, you can see it started to fold over. So I just want to fold it over so it closes. Sometimes it slips. There we go. Okay. And that's it. That's all you do. Now, if you have some parts, so because I did um, cut it a little bit, so it's a little sharp. It's hard to tell on camera, but when you're doing this, you may see like the end has like a little sharp piece that's sticking up. You can actually close that down. So you'll just take your pliers and you'll just close that down. You push everything down so everything's flat. So just so you know, everything is fixable. And just make sure there's nothing sharp because you don't want anything to poke your client. And I'm not even pushing that hard. I'm just giving it a little tap. Okay? Because you don't want it to poke your client if that does happen. Okay? There you go. <laughs> like I said, this one requires a little bit more work, but it works as well. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to just make a little makeshift bracelet. I'm just gonna, like I said the last time, use my random beads here that I don't use to sell. And basically we're going to do the same thing on the other end so that's all I'm going to do like I said we're going to put our crimping tube on first loop it through let's put a little bit more on there 
I want to make sure when I close it, it's enough slack. I'm kind of using these long ones to give me more length. Okay, so I think that's enough. Okay, so again, you want to make sure your work is tight. Push everything down. Oh, let me go back. Sorry about that. So remember how we have this little piece of uh, string or line uh, sticking out? Like I said, I want to cover that up with my beads. So I'm going to make sure that my beads cover that too. So I don't, I don't have to cut that off. Okay, I can just tuck that within my work and everything's gonna be tight. It's not gonna show. That. Let's hold it together. There we go. And just tuck it up in there. There we go. So it's hidden and you can't see it. Okay, so we push everything down, everything is tight. Then we're gonna find, there's my crimping tube right here. Put that on. Then the other end of our barrel clasp Put that on and we're going to do the exact same thing okay we get it on and we're going to put our string through the loop and then back through the crimping tube so what i like to do is i'm going to put it through the crimping tube and through some of the beads get it through there hang on try to make sure you guys can see so I got it through there. This hole is so small. And I'm gonna put it through some of these beads. Four, five, six, you know, it doesn't really matter. And depending on how much you have left over, you might can get all of it through. Like thread it through back through your work, depending on how much is left over. So I'm just gonna pull that through. And see that space, we don't want that. So we need to make that tight. So I'm just gonna adjust it here and pull it through. Just adjust it, hold it in place, pull it through. There we go. Now I'm gonna cut this when I'm done. Okay, but for the most part, we have our finished product, but we still have to secure it down. So like I said, I don't like the crimping tube so close to the fishing line, so I'm gonna pull back. Uh oh, that was too much. Just a little bit. We want a little bit of wiggle room. Because like I said, that metal can cut your fishing line. So I'm okay with right there. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do one. One. Light squeeze. Two on our T. Light squeeze. There we go, I'm getting better at this. Okay, see now on this side, you see it perfectly. See that demarcation? That's what you want, it shouldn't crack. Like I said, I'm a little heavy handed. I'm still getting used to my own strength. <laughs> okay. And that's actually secure. I mean, if you want to leave it that way, you can. But we're going to actually fold it over and close it in. So then I'm going to turn my work to the side and I want to fold it in on itself. 
and we're going to use the first part of the barrel clasp like i said i'm sorry if you guys can't see this but hopefully my words is describing it well enough where you can understand what i'm saying and we're just gonna fold it in half again we're not going to use our teeth because we're not making a mark we just want to close it down very lightly there we go and it folded over okay there we go and that's the finished look so now i'm going to cut my excess line off i'm just going to push this and get it as close to the inside as possible so nothing's sticking out there we go And I can actually, it's a little piece sticking out. If you can manipulate it, you can tuck that under that bead. Right there. Come on, get in there. Oh, I'll just cut it. There we go. Now we're, okay. So now everything is seamless. That's that, and now we can close it. And there we go. Hang on, I didn't close it all the way. Oh, yes, I did. There we go. And that's it. So here are our two types of barrel clasp. Thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you soon.